Listen to this crunch, ready? Mm. That's a waffle. Hello and welcome to this episode of Bake It Up a Notch Bite Size. I'm Erin Jean McDowell and I'm especially excited for today's episode. We're gonna be making one of my all time favorite recipes. These are my yeasted waffles. I love this recipe because you get great flavor from the yeast while also getting a crisp, delicious waffle that we all love. And best of all, it needs to sit overnight. So this is such a great way to kind of prepare a special breakfast ahead of time so that all you have to do is sleepily drop it into your waffle iron when the time comes. This is a very simple recipe. And before I get started mixing the batter, I wanna also mention that this recipe is from my new book, Savory Baking. And one of the ways that I take this to a very savory place is to pair it with some crispy fried chicken and some hot sauce. We're gonna make a chicken and waffle situation today. And we're gonna be taking the fried chicken tips from my grandma Jean. This is the way she used to make fried chicken for me as a kid. I'll tell you more about it later, but for now, let's get baking or waffling. <laughs> We're gonna start with some all-purpose flour. We're gonna mix all our dry ingredients together first. So I have some sugar, just a little bit. It's gonna give that, you know, waffly taste that we love. I also have some salt. I'll go ahead and whisk those together and then I'm gonna add the yeast in here as well. Just put the yeast right in with the flour. Wonderful. Now we can kind of mix some of our wet ingredients together. So I'm gonna start with some melted butter. I've got three eggs. These are large eggs. I like to do this with eggs at room temperature, but this is actually one time where it doesn't really matter. This is going to kind of rise and get its flavor slowly overnight in the fridge. So we'll just give that a whisk. Then our last two kind of liquid ingredients here are some milk. That's the majority of the liquid for this recipe, but I'm also going to add a little bit of cream. And cream as an ingredient in waffles is really wonderful because waffles really benefit from having a slightly higher ratio of fat. That's how we get some of that crispness. So you can do that with melted butter of which we did add some, but it's the cream that really takes these to an extra special place. and everything just goes all in together. Now you do wanna make sure, this bowl is pretty large, but I might even transfer this to a larger bowl before I put it in the refrigerator because it is going to increase in volume as it rises. So it's gonna do kind of this slow overnight rise. And whenever we're working with yeast, a slow rise is what equates to a lot of yeast flavor. So it, you always are still gonna get the rise from yeast if you use warm liquid and let it rise for a shorter amount of time, but using cold ingredients and letting it rise slowly in refrigeration is one of the ways that we can make sure we get the most yeasty goodness out of all of this. Okay, some lumps are totally fine, just like with most waffle and pancake batters. Let me give this a little bit of a scrape. So I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and let it rise overnight. Up to 12 hours is ideal, so this is definitely something you just wanna do kind of after you cook dinner one night before you go to bed. Ah, it's the morning, even though I'm wearing the exact same outfit, and I've got my waffle batter ready. Now look at this in our overhead camera here. Look how alive. This waffle is bubbles galore. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Jiggle, 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 jiggle. And actually a little wiggle and jiggle is good because we kind of need to deflate this a little bit before we start. Look at that. See the volume went way, way, way down. Okay, I've got a preheated waffle iron. Just gonna give this a little spray with some nonstick spray. In my opinion, you don't need to spray it every single time. It's usually every other, but you know your own waffle iron the best. So just do what works for you because we don't want it to stick. And I'm gonna take one good ladle full right in the center. 
I like to make this with a slightly thicker waffle iron. You can do it in something thicker, like a Belgian waffle maker or something thinner. They both work really well. Go ahead and close that. And you're just gonna need to cook it according to your manufacturer's instructions for your waffle maker. But basically you're looking for the same things that you would for a typical waffle recipe. We're looking for nice, even golden brown and really nice and crisp. Now I also have this tray here. And that's because when I take this off, I'll go ahead and put my waffles onto the tray. And after I've made a few, I can put them in a low oven to keep them nice and crisp and warm until I'm ready to serve them. Let's take this one out and make one more at least. A couple more maybe. Ooh, yes. She crisp. So our waffles are done, they're nice and crispy, and to keep them crisp until we're ready to eat them, I like to hold them in a low oven, around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. You can always tent them with foil, or you can do what I do. If I'm pretty sure I'm gonna eat soon, I preheat the oven to 300, put the waffles in there, and turn the oven off. That way they aren't gonna over brown or dry out, but they're gonna stay nice and warm. All right, so let's make a really, really quick fried chicken. This is the way my grandma used to make fried chicken, and it was specifically because she was often eating by herself or only with one other person. So she kind of developed this way to use a chicken breast or a couple of chicken breasts. She always would have pieces of chicken in her freezer, but it's more of a pan fry method because it makes it a little bit easier to do even if you're just one person. And I always really loved it because it is so simple and it suddenly takes fried chicken, which can be a little bit more of a complicated process to do well. It kind of takes it to an easier, more weeknight or lazy weekend morning kind of place. So um, when you make your waffle, batter. You'll also put your chicken pieces and you can use strips of breast meat or strips of skinless boneless thigh as well. Anything like that. Um, I know she used breast a lot. I know a lot of people don't think that fried chicken is as good with white meat. Fully agree. I love a dark meat fried chicken, but this is kind of its own thing and it's a tribute to my grandma. She would pour buttermilk over it, a very kind of traditional Southern way to brine it overnight. This helps tenderize it. It keeps it juicy even when we fry it. And best of all, it kind of takes away part of the process. We don't need to kind of flour, dredge flour. We can just take it right out of the buttermilk and into some seasoned flour. So I don't even drain it that much. I kind of let some of the buttermilk stay on it because that's how we're gonna get a nice dredging. If you really like a thick coating, you can also do this process twice. Um, kind of put it back in the buttermilk and then back into the flour. Either way is, is totally great. I'm just gonna do, I think, a single dredge today because we are putting it on a base of these wafflies. That's what my dad calls waffles, wafflies. <laughs> And this just start dropping these as I bread them into my hot oil. This is more of a pan fry and in a pan fry, you just need like a half inch to an inch of oil depending on the size of your pan. And where the oil should ideally come about halfway up the side of the food. When I make fried chicken, usually it's much more of a to-do. I like to brine the chicken. I, I usually only make it for like no more than six people because I just feel like that's the easiest number to control the quality of the chicken with. But this method I do all the time on a weeknight, you know, if I just want a really simple, crispy chicken. And you know, if you have a favorite way to fry chicken, that would be great with these waffles too. So this is just one really simple way to do it. So I really just like that boneless, the ease of the boneless. It's both quick to cook. It doesn't require the same oil. We can still brine it using buttermilk and keep it nice and juicy. But I just love that when I go to cut the waffle, the chicken is cutting the exact same way. We've 
got our waffles, which I was keeping warm in the oven. I think this is my waffle of choice today. I'm gonna do a little, a little butter on it. A few pieces of chicken. And then you can do, you know, sweet and savory. Sometimes I do pour just a little bit of syrup onto the waffle. See around the perimeter. This is an exact science. But then I like the hot sauce on the chicken and then pooling a little bit into the waffle. Mmm, like that. Okay, the moment of truth. So see what I mean? I got a bite with chicken and waffle. Chicken, waffle, chicken, waffle. All in one perfect bite. A big bite though, and I've done this to myself. So here we go. I'm smiling a little because that actually really tastes like my grandma's chicken. I'm sure some of you out there have had this moment. It's like, like I could almost cry. It tastes so much like her chicken, but I'm happy. <laughs> happy cry. Mm. And then the waffle is just like, it has kind of the things that you love about bread because it has that great yeast flavor. It has like a little bit of butteriness, but it's so crisp. So it's also this like contrasting textures. The chicken is still really, really juicy because it's been soaking in the buttermilk. Mm. I gotta be honest, I was not actually expecting to feel this many feelings, but I have strong feelings. It's really, really good. It doesn't get much better than this. I'm so glad that we made this recipe. Mm. You can find both of these recipes in my new book, Savory Baking. And I hope that this episode gets you excited to make some waffles for somebody that you love. And maybe make chicken and waffles too. I mean, these waffles are good on their own. This waffle recipe is such a great base and you can do a lot of really wonderful things with it. And I hope that this episode inspires you to try some waffles yourself. And if you do, please let me know in the comments and use hashtag bake it up a notch because I love to see what you're baking at home. As always, the recipes are linked in the video description below, but you can also find them in my new book, Savory Baking. If you like chicken and waffles, please do me a favor and click like and subscribe so you can be made aware of all of our new episodes as they become available. Until next time, happy baking. Now I'm actually crying. <laughs> Chicken makes me cry. <laughs> <laughs> Only when it's good. <laughs>